Alright, so this is going to be a quick little test of my exoskeleton. It's currently only pressurized to 40 psi rather than maximum 100 psi. Uh, just a lift, we've got 40 kilo weight here. Um, now, usually, I can't actually curl this on. <coughs> no, can't curl that on my own. So, it's a good demonstration of the exoskeleton doing something that I can't do. Alright, so as is, the exoskeleton is extremely rigid because everything is pressurized, so I can slouch down in it and the suit supports its own weight. I, it just requires me to balance it. So I just release, releasing the legs in the back. Means I can now walk around fairly freely. I'm uh, currently tethered, plugged into the wall. The, all the valves in the suit run up to 12 volts. I just don't have the battery for it, so we're tethered for this experiment. So flexibility is pretty good. Can walk around fairly comfortably. I'll just depressurize the arms. Yeah, arms and shoulders. Got okay range of movement in the shoulders. Uh, I am mainly focused on going up and down. I made them lock back, so when I lift something up, they don't naturally swing towards the center of gravity. Um, and yeah, so I guess we'll start the test. System pressure has dropped from 50 psi to about 45. That's just because of the size of the air tank on the back. Uh, currently done an air regulator on it, so I can't maintain that pressure. All right, lifting up the weight. First thing we're going to do is pressurize the legs. And then the next thing we do is pressurize the back. There we go. So that takes all the weight off me. So I can still slouch down, so it still holds it up. And using my legs to balance, you can still kind of do minor adjustments, but it's preferable if you get all your balance perfect before you lift something up. It's very difficult. The legs kind of lock into the ground. Okay, let's just go for one curl. So the um, suit can't quite lift 40 kilos at 35 psi. Uh, that's just because it, yeah, it just needs more pressure. The cylinders can't that don't have the width to do any more than that. Um, so I just put this back down. I use the shoulders. As you can see, the shoulders push it out a bit. Let me lower that down, and I'll turn the back off. Turn the shoulders off, release the arms, turn back up, release the legs, and I can walk around again. I want to do this test with a, for a maximum lift. However, uh, my air compressor over there seemed to cark it just before filming, so I had to use a hand pump, which is about this big and Took me a good 10 minutes to pump it up to 50 psi and was starting to get quite hot. Uh, if you've ever seen a fire piston, that's essentially what the hand pump was doing. So, we'll show you some close ups in the suit and call it a day. Okay, so a quick change of location. The lighting in the other place was absolutely awful. Uh, I'll sit currently kneeling down, which is the best, most rigid uh, stance you can get in it without it being powered. Um, so as I was talking about before the pump, this is what I was using to pressurize it. Took a very long time to fill up this uh, PVC tank. Um, just using PVC pipe because the actual air tank is fairly expensive and as you'll quickly find out, everything in this suit is extremely budget. I'll start with the feet. Feet are made out of aluminium, they were cast using the lost foam method. If you're unfamiliar with that, you can probably Google it. 
Um, yeah, so that cradles your foot quite nicely. It's got some straps, hold your footy nice and tight so the suit moves with your foot. Moving up the leg, got a big, yeah, this is a uh, 300 millimeter cylinder, if I remember correctly. Uh, that's do the squatty motion. Uh, all the all the joints are just a single nut going through, no bearings, nothing fancy. Uh, these are the cylinder for the back, let it bend forwards and back. Uh, it doesn't have that much range of movement, but it was the best I could do with what I had. Uh, all the joints for all the hips and all the cylinders are these. Uh, I'll get a better view on the shoulder. It's a uh, called a rod end. If you search it on eBay, which is where everything came from, so it gives you a bit of movement uh, side to side as well as full range 360 up and down. So I've got them for the shoulders, hips, and then on many of the cylinders, just to keep them. Make sure the cylinders stay in line. Got a waist belt here. Just a simple two ring for the buckle. Um, the original buckle was a plastic one. Kept coming undone. Just wasn't strong enough. Um, I have this a bit of tension in it so your back doesn't rest against the metal frame so you get a bit of cushion going up to the shoulder shoulder joint allows the arm to push forwards and pull back bicep one fairly simple just pulls it up the weight of the object makes it come back down uh, that's where my pressure gauge is shows the system pressure and then moving down to the hand it's just a little cradle for the metal bar or handle, whatever you're lifting to sit in. Now the controls for this, I've got four buttons on this side, four buttons on that hand. This hand has two additional buttons, they're currently not hooked up to anything, but the option is there. If you look at this one, we have shoulder, arm, back, leg, and then on the other side, I've got the same shoulder arm and two miscellaneous buttons. All these are latching switches, so you press it in, they stay on, press it again, they come off. Pretty much the cheapest and easiest control system I could do. The, the first iteration of the suit was utilizing Arduino for all the uh, control systems, but it was pretty buggy. Uh, the f I was going to use a bunch of different sensors, but the price started go going up real fast and I just didn't have the time or the money for that. Um, hidden behind this big PVC tank we've got all of these solenoid valves. Run on 12 volts, uh, three-way valve, so pushes air in the suit. When you turn it off, the air from the cylinder can be released. Uh, they're pretty cheap, only around 10 bucks each from eBay. Pretty dodgy as well. Uh, this particular one on the suit leaks quite a bit. And it's not joins, it is the actual valve itself. It's very frustrating. Uh, I've got the air regulator here to be hooked up to an air compressor. Um, that normally works pretty well because then you can have a high pressure in the air compressor and then run the suit at its optimal 100 psi and you don't have that pressure drop each time you move an arm. At the moment, I've just got this. I'm just bypassing this, hooking it directly up to the tank. Uh, to power the suit, I used to use a LiPo battery, but that is currently in a different state right now, and you can't take LiPos on a plane, so I'm just using this 12-volt transformer. Um, works works all right. Pretty easy, just means I have to be tethered. And I think that's pretty much it. The actual frame of the suit is just all 20 mil box tubing, um, welded really poorly together. <laughs> Initially I was trying to do it without welding, which is why we've got all these brackets with aluminium rivets. These used to be aluminium rivets until the first time I lifted it, they actually broke off and the whole shoulders, whole shoulder system snapped off the back. So, replaced that with steel, welded it up, a lot more reliable. Oh yeah, the, uh, to hold it on my back, it's a harness from a hiking bag pretty rigid and I added these aluminium uh, flat bar in there 25mm by 3mm 
because it allowed me to bend it over and just have a more rigid system for when it's bolted onto the suit. So it's definitely not coming off. This Velcro is kind of just there to support it, not actually holding the weight. Yeah, that's um, that's the suit. There's uh, a couple, I think I've got three videos on YouTube at the moment testing the weightlifting capacity of the upper body. There is still currently no uh, videos of me testing the lower part of the body with the exoskeleton, as I still haven't done it yet because I just haven't had the time and my acupressor is now broken, so it's very difficult for me to do that. But I assume it will be able to hold up to the strength that seems to be held up fine so far. Yeah, that's the suit. Just one more thing before I go. This is a suit I've been, I was working on on the side the whole time I was building that one. Uh, it's very broken at the moment, as you can tell by this strap not actually being there. Uh, but it was more aimed to be a lightweight suit, so no steel on it. It's all all the rigid parts are aluminium. It's a lot more flexible as there's no actual power to any like shoulder or hip joints, which are the ones that inhibit uh, flexibility the most. Um, still not happy with the current design I've got on the wrist here. Still very rigid, uh, but it's just the best I could do with the time I had. But all the actuators, um, they're actually pneumatic muscles. There's a few videos on YouTube at the moment of people making these. Um, so they're very lightweight and very strong for how much they actually cost. So I've got that on the arm, the leg, and then I've got two on the back just to help support that when you lift things. The leg is currently functional. Um, I would pump it up, but it's not that exciting when I have to use a tiny little bike pump. Um, the arm at the moment is completely stuffed. The um, latex tube inside there is a snapped and cracked because it's old and shit. But it's very modular this one, uh, for example with these quick connects you can just plug them in then they've got power to the leg, unplug it if I don't want the leg all together, I can just unclip that, undo that, undo that, leg comes off, uh, I can do the same for the arm and everything just connects to this base plate, uh, yeah, do something on the side, that sparks my ideas.